staff from Santa Fe County are here, uh, and they're going to share with us uh, some of their experiences and practices. Uh, and with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let them get started. Uh, they're going to take pretty much the whole session, and we'll see what kind of Q&A we can fit in at the end. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, with that, Ms. Martinez. <coughs> How are you guys doing today? Good. You know what, first of all, I want to uh, thank my wife. She's probably my biggest supporter. She is my biggest supporter in what I do and, and running for office. And uh, it uh, takes a lot of work and a lot of time for the family, but uh, I uh, appreciate her. She's sitting in the back. And Gary Pettis, my de a deputy assessor right there, you know, and a lot of time, a lot of hard work and effort, you know, in this office. And uh, so I want to recognize him. And uh, Bernalillo County, Tanya Giddings and her staff, the good job that they're doing over there in Bernalillo County, and also Joaquin Valdez, the Chief uh, Assessor in uh, Los Alamos County, his staff, with the good job that they're doing there. So I uh, just wanted to kind of give them a little props there. Of, 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 in New Mexico, we're just trying to you know change the atmosphere, and I think uh, they're a big, a big part of that. So uh, so just wanted to recognize them. Well, my name is Gus Martinez. I'm the Santa Fe County Assessor. Um, I was elected back in 2015. Um, and uh, the idea was to cultivate uh, customer service um, within our community, which is 150,000 people, three municipalities, and be able to get information out to the public in an efficient way. And so, you know, it's it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work, and um, I couldn't do it without the staff that I have. You know, uh, my staff is you're only as good as your staff. And, and I will say that, you know, uh, they work hard, they're very passionate about what they do, just, just like I am. Uh, they're on every outreach uh, that, I, that I have, which we've had over probably, uh, I don't know, 100, I don't know, outreaches throughout the three years that I've, I've been there. But they're there and they're supportive and they bring a lot of knowledge. So, you know, I always tell them, you know, when you do uh, good, we all shine. And if we do bad, then we all do bad together, you know? So it's very important that we, uh, we um, promote customer service. You know, I'm very uh, excited. Um, you know, this past year, we were the 2016 recipients of the uh, Public Information Award through IAAO. And this recently, uh, we are the recipient of the Public uh, uh, Sector Award through Town Center Reuters, and that's because of all the hard work that, that they have done in my staff back at, back at uh, work there. So I just uh, wanted to, to say that, and leave it with one last thing, and I'll let them get started, because they got a lot of good information. The 33rd President of the United States, Harry Truman, once said, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't get, who, you don't care who gets the credit. And, um, and, and that's what I live by there is, is you know what, it doesn't matter who gets, I, it doesn't matter who gets the credit, but if we can help constituents and we can build trust through transparency and uh, you know what, that's what, that's what matters. And I think that uh, we have some success with that and I hope, you know, um, you guys can use some of that in your jurisdictions because that's why we're all here. We're here to share information and uh, to help uh, our constituents to build trust in what we're doing. So uh, for that, I will uh, give it to uh, to Danny. Good afternoon, my name is Daniel Prescott. I'm the Department Administrator for the Santa Fe County Assessor's Office. During the past few years, we've tried to create innovative techniques to disseminate information effectively using old and new technologies. We've also promoted excellent customer service. Customer service and technology are two key aspects for the modern assessor. Last year I attended a conference that talked about how important it is to have a sense of humor as a government agency. It's a scary idea and a risky move. Not everybody has the same sense of humor and you can offend somebody pretty easily. After that session I was back in New Mexico driving home one day and I had what I thought was this hilarious idea. I called up Assessor Martinez immediately and I can't express to you how excited I was. I'm not sure he was under understanding anything I was saying. Judging by his responses and his tone, he did not share that same excitement. <laughs> <laughs> the next day I was back in his office and I was explaining to him how I wanted to create this mockumentary, this spoof of the crocodile hunter, but I would be the appraiser hunter and I would follow appraisers out in the field and hide in bushes and weeds and explain what's going on during the protest process. I got the okay 
I went across the street to a fellow coworker of mine that shares that same passion for videography. And we created the video in three days. Um, before he gave me the okay, he had, he had me explain or show him my Australian accent. This accent, uh, let me explain it to you a little bit. It's a mix between my Spanish roots. I come from a place in New Mexico that's known as the lowrider capital of the world. So my Spanish roots are in there. And I can't distinguish between British and Australian. So there's this, this big mix of, us, of accents in this. And I'm gonna show you that video right now. perfect time of the year to catch an appraiser. <laughs> the protest season. So during this protest season, you might be able to see a few county appraisers driving on the roads. Let's see if we can catch one in their natural habitat. <laughs> I think I see an appraiser up ahead. Let's see, catch up to him and see what he's up to. Wow, this is so exciting. <laughs> now, when you when pull up to the appraiser, they always not to make eye contact. Appraisers can be very over friendly. I'm going to slow down a bit. getting his, uh, getting a little bit intense here. So I think he's making his way to the property owner. He's about to approach her. He has no idea what to expect here. The appraiser is talking to the property owner about amenities, bedroom counts, bathroom counts, and other things like that. This could go either way. This is a little intense. You might want to back up. So majestic. <laughs> it's not to see with an but that slight smirk on his face is a sign that he's in a very calm state. He's probably accepted his house to be his subject property. <laughs> and that device in his hand right now is known in the appraisal world as a clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> Watch yourself around here. There's tons of rattlesnakes in these hills. The last thing you want to do is start with the appraiser. <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> well, that was a close one. New Mexico rappers can be fatal. <laughs> so after the property of the appraiser <coughs> he gathers all that information and goes back to the barracks and looks up other properties to come up with a value. Let's go take a look. All right. So we've arrived where the appraiser comes back to enter that information. I'm gonna head around this building here to see if I can maybe peek into the window and see if we can find it. Let's go. Oh smokes! There's like nine or ten of them in there. <laughs> well, now we have to make it seem like we're one of them, so I'm gonna say some appraisal related things. <laughs> Measurements. <laughs> Comparable sales. <laughs> Aerial imagery. <laughs> I think they take it to us. Now what the appraisers do at this point is they get into the little cubbies. It's terrific. They even got small aerial imagery where they can get extremely accurate measurements. Once the appraiser comes up with the value, he'll call the property owner on his desk telephone. The appraiser is quite an advanced species. If the property owner is okay with the appraiser's decision, that will end the protest then and there. So if the appraiser and the property owner don't come up with a value that they agree on on the property, then what's scheduled is a formal hearing, and that's held right in here. It's amazing. They, what happens is they sit in these chairs, and a board is sitting right, right in front of them, and each person then furnishes proof to the board to prove that their property value is correct. After that, the board will look at all the evidence and then determine which value is correct. <laughs> So this video got a great response. Uh, people all over the nation shared it. People in appraisers in California, New York, and Florida all shared it and liked it and tagged their friends. It reached close to 4,000 people, which is pretty big for our our county. <laughs> IWO shared it and liked it, which was huge. We felt, I felt like this video did what I wanted it to do. It was a risky move for the assessor's office. It was a risky move for the county. But more importantly, it was risky for my reputation <laughs> in the Australian community. 
It's an unorthodox form of customer service. We're giving information in a different way. Customer service is a standard nowadays. If you think of your day-to-day -day when you're shopping or you're eating somewhere, you receive some sort of service. If it's good customer service, you don't really think about it, and you just go on with your day. It's when somebody goes above and beyond that snaps you out of your day-to-day. -day. And you're, really, you're taken back and, wow, this person was a good worker. You want to reward them somehow, give them a bigger tip, or talk to their supervisors. Some ways that we promote excellent customer service in our office is through staff accountability. Every constituent that comes into our office is given the opportunity to rate the staff member that they worked with. Rate them on a survey monkey that asks them simple questions. Did they smile? Did they greet you? Did they offer you these exemptions? Were they knowledgeable? Every staff member in our office has a business card, and the back of that business card has a QR code. When this QR code is scanned, it takes you to that same survey monkey. Well, what's going to drive somebody to even want to scan this? Because it's kind of a hassle. I have to get my phone out, get, take a picture of the thing, and then who knows what else. I'll tell you two things, two extremes. Terrible customer service and excellent customer service. If I get terrible customer service and you give me this option, you bet I'm going to leave you some bad feedback. If you give me excellent customer service, maybe not. It would have to be amazing, excellent customer service. But we want that to be in our staff's mind. When this is scanned, it takes you to this survey. This one's driven more towards the protest process. Is this the first year you protested? Compared to last year, how was this year? And then other things that are driven more towards customer service. Were they knowledgeable? Did they smile? Did they greet you? Did they offer you these exemptions? Other ways that we promote our staff accountability is through our social media. Social media is huge. Everybody, most everybody has a social media page. It gives us a sense of responsibility. When somebody leaves a review on our social media, it's a huge sense of responsibility because they might call you out by name, they know you work there, your friends and family might see that, but if it's positive, it's a positive review, you have a sense of like pride and ownership. I did that, I helped that person. I'm glad that they took time out of their day and they were able to leave, they, they were willing to leave review on our Facebook, that's awesome. Right now we have 120 reviews on our Facebook page. 112 of those are five-star reviews. Eight of those are four-star reviews. I get a little disappointed with the four-star reviews, but that's just me and I need to get used to it. We have received two one-star reviews. One of them was just last week. I get a notification on my cell phone every time I get a review, and this one read, San Pedro County, one star out of five. Are you kidding me? What do we do to this guy to get one star? I read more into it and the review read, Santa Fe County Assessor's Office chat is amazing. Thank you for your customer service. I was relieved. I contacted the guy and thanked him for taking time out of his day. And I was, I told him I was glad that we provided good customer service. Then I subtly asked him, would you mind changing that one star? <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckily he did. The other one was a legitimate one star review. She was extremely unhappy with our office and I worked with her for two days straight. And she finally, I finally resolved her issue, and she was so happy that I provided that level of customer service. She wanted to write a letter to Assessor Martinez, and I told her, if you, actually, if you just change that one star, because I hate seeing that there. And she did, <laughs> luckily. Here are some samples of some reviews we received. I really like your move toward an interactive website. On top of that, a customer service to support when bugs arise. Daniel, oh my goodness. I swear I didn't put that on there on purpose, man. <laughs> Daniel Fruskis responded to my questions promptly and called me as soon as the bugs had been resolved. He, we're still talking about Daniel Fruskis, just, <laughs> he was so helpful. Thank you for not acting like a government agency. All, all joking aside, I was really happy to receive this review, but that last sentence kind of bothers me because I'm a government employee and I feel like I'm a really good worker. So I think as a government agency, we need to somehow change that. This next one talks about our chat. They're happy with our chat. They're happy with our customer service, but they give credit to the county and to our office. So that just goes to show that we are a reflection <coughs> of the entire county, not just our office. We're glad it was positive feedback. And then this next one is just a simple thank you. Your parcel map search is awesome, and your chat works great. Thank you, guys. We just feel good to receive this positive feedback. It lets us know that we are doing their jobs, doing our jobs, and that they are thankful for it. Some of the things that we post on our Facebook are our outreach meetings. 
We conduct outreach meetings. Our main one is during the month of April for our protest season. We take our office out to the county and we talk about educating the public on the roles and responsibilities of the assessor's office. Benefits and exemptions. You'd be surprised how many people don't know what the assessor's office does and don't know that these exemptions are available. We help them file for protest, protest evaluations, evaluation protests. We try to build community oh, relationships within the community. Santa Fe County is 2,000 square miles in area. We try to spread them out as much as we can. In the past, we've done satellite offices, but this year we did homeowners associations, and that was a, I had a great response because HOAs have contact information. I was able to send a PDF that explained the roles and responsibilities, the benefits and exemptions. It talked about the dates and times and locations. We had interesting stories on there. This was an awesome outreach. People were surprised that we were there. When we first started these outreach meetings, a lot of people weren't happy with their office because they saw how we were in the past and they, they came to the outreach wanting to fight. We do an outreach that's called, it's, the outreach is called the Home Builders Home Show and it's mostly for people that are looking to buy houses or build additions. So there's architects, windows, and plumbers. When they first saw us there, they looked at us and what are you doing here? Upset. We tried our best, we smiled, we greeted them, we called them over, we showed them the property value, we offered them the benefits and exemptions, we explained what we do. And we changed their minds. Maybe they weren't completely happy, but they weren't as upset with us. We do realtor educational outreaches. We talk to title companies about the tools that we have available on our website that can help them do their jobs. And what better way to educate new homeowners than to educate the people that they first come into contact with when buying a home? We have agricultural outreaches. In New Mexico, there's a special method of valuation that can significantly lower your property taxes. Some ways that we promote these outreaches is through our newspaper advertisements. Santa Fe County is an older community, so newspaper actually has a huge response. The first Sunday of every April, we send out our biggest ad. It's called the Spadia, and it goes on to one of New Mexico's biggest newspapers, the Santa Fe New Mexican, and it wraps around the entire paper. And one way we try to grab attention is we talk about the benefits and exemptions first. Head of family exemption, $2,000 off your taxable value. Veterans exemption, $4,000 off your taxable value. We're hoping that they're gonna see that and open it up and see what else they can find out. We talk about the roles and responsibilities of the assessor's office. I know I keep saying that, but that's Kind of how we drive it home, we get it in their head. Repetitive, you'll learn it. We have interesting stories. One of my favorite things about our advertisements is we feature our employees. Assessor Martinez is a modest and humble person. So when you see our ads, you'll see the office, you'll see that we're real people. What's great about this is our friends and family will see this and they'll recognize us and start to read more into it. We can help out friends and family that way. Another great thing is we have a notice of value breakdown on this advertisement. Before we'd send out the notice, and good luck reading it. It's wordy, there's some terms in there you might not know. And now, here's a breakdown. This is your notice of value. This is your parcel number. If you have this exemption, it's right here. If you don't have this exemption, the application is right here. We try to push information as best we can. We have facts of the week. Fact of the week, if you miss the protest deadline, you have a second chance to do so in district court. Fact of the week, the Santa Fe County Assessor's Office mails out 86,000 notices of value and gets 6,000 of those returned due to bad addresses. We're hoping these big numbers open eyes and maybe people will realize, hey, that's why we're not getting our notice. Maybe our, maybe our address is bad. Even if we helped 10 people, it's worth it. We have interesting stories like this one, the window into the past. This talks about how assessment started as a window tax if you had this many windows, your property value was this high, and people started boarding up their windows to lower their property values. <laughs> then it transitioned to how we do it today. Then we have simple things. One of the first things Assessor Martinez changed when he took office was something very simple, the, the envelope that we send out our notices of value in. Before it said, this is not a tax bill. As a lazy taxpayer, I would read that, this is not important, and throw that aside. Now it says, you may qualify for. You may qualify for the head of family, 
valuation freeze, veterans exemption, agricultural valuation. We're hoping that this is gonna make people open it and see if they can save money. And then when they open it, there's a flyer inside that explains any new tools that we added to our website. Along with the notice of value, of course. <laughs> Other ways we promote the roles and responsibilities of the assessor's office is through radio. We do live radio broadcasts. Last year for Veterans Day, we did a, radio broad a live radio broadcast with a veteran, and he owned his house for a number of years and didn't have the exemption. He missed out on thousands. We do advertisements that explain benefits and exemptions. We do advertisements that explain the 3% cap in New Mexico. We talk about the outreaches. If it's a live broadcast, we'll say, this is where we're gonna be this week. Or if we plan it out right, we'll just find it to where we can say, this is where we're gonna be today, tomorrow. We use these old technologies to help us help the community. Now let's talk about a new technology, information technology. How does information technology and customer service relate? You're kind of taking yourself out of the equation and now it's just the user on your website. It's customer service because you're making life easier. Right now, you can log on to our website and look at a parcel map search. You click on a property, it'll pull up information. You can search by owner name, address, UPC, or other things. Two years ago, we implemented protesting online. We were reluctant to do so because we thought we were gonna make it too easy for people to protest. We thought people would be click happy. Oh, I'm gonna protest so much this year. But it turned out to be less pro fewer protests than the year prior, which was awesome. Business personal property filing, we started last December, and that's customer service externally and internally. Now somebody can render their assets, and the next year when they log on, all they have to do is click Point and click to edit, it's faster. Same thing for our staff, point and click. We have awesome tools like the Estimate Taxes and the Tax Levy Certificate for Realtors and Property Owners. Two years ago, we put notices of value online. We're making life easier through technology. Now here's our cornerstone for customer service, online live chat. When Assessor Martinez first introduced this idea to me, I was ecstatic. Online live chat is my preferred method of communication between myself and anybody. I'm an introvert. Yeah. So if I, I trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Who here knows me and knows I'm an introvert? Okay, two people. Anyway. <laughs> so it really takes away the intimidation, and that's why I love it. If I were to go to my cell phone provider in person and say, hey, my service has been terrible lately. What can you do for me? If they told me, well, we can't really do anything, I would, oh, all right, well, thanks. But with chat, that doesn't scare me. I'm gonna get what I need to get done, done. I don't care what you say, there's no intimidation because it really just feels like I'm talking to artificial intelligence. With chat, we can provide excellent guidance through a website. I can see where people are on our website. I can send links, I can send attachments, PDFs, images, videos, anything. It keeps employees engaged. They can start a chat, and do some other work, but in the back of their mind, they know they're still working on this chat. They can do multiple chats. Most of what I learned about the assessor's office is when I started chat. It's an excellent learning tool. I would be asked questions I didn't know the answer to, and I have to go learn them. Then I come back and I teach them. So really, I'm kind of learning it twice, and it's retaining. It's an excellent learning tool for new and current employees. Another thing is get instant feedback. I can see how an employee, I can watch a live chat from the administrative side and see how that employee is, is performing. Are they answering quickly? Are they giving the correct answer? Is the user happy with their answers? Are they answering the question right? Online live chat starts like this. Somebody will ask a, ask a question and one of our staff members says, hello, my name is Daniel, if their name was Daniel. <laughs> how, can I, how can I assist you today? Please take a moment to rate our chat on our Facebook when we're done. I'm giving them the key to rate me about my work before I even help them. Talk about staff accountability. When I send this message out, I make sure to do the best job that I can. Chat has been our biggest promotion for our social media following. Currently we have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and a YouTube. And we promote things like our outreach meetings. We talk about the roles and responsibilities of the assessor's office, the benefits and exemptions. 
One of my favorite things about Facebook is when I create an event, one of our outreaches, anybody that lives near that event is gonna get a notification whether they follow us or not. It's free advertising. We promote facts of the week, just simple facts, facts of the week. The Santa Fe County Assessor's Office handles value, the Treasurer's Office handles taxes. We're hoping that's just gonna help somebody. Maybe we'll get less questions about taxes in our office. Anytime an employee of ours reaches a milestone, we promote that. We want them to know that we're proud of them, but we also want the public to know that our staff is educated. We know what we're doing in our field. Another favorite of mine is the Employee of the Month. This month we have Jessica Ulibari as our Employee of the Month. We want her to know that she's been kicking some butt this month. Not even this month, but longer than that. But we want her to know that. She's been doing a great job keeping up with her staff, her evaluations, and on top of that, her protests and doing part of this presentation. We're proud of her. This post reached close to 2,000 people, so her friends and family also saw that we care about her. We want the public to see that we're an office that cares and that they can trust. Every employee of the month is featured on the Facebook cover, uh, cover page. The first picture you'll see is Jessica. She is the face of the office for the entire month. Every, not every employee of the month, but sometimes we do employee of the month videos just to bring it into a different level. It's, it brings it, it makes it more personal. You can see this person is not just a picture with some words on the side. This person actually cares about their job. What do you, how does it feel to be selected as employee of the month? It feels great. You can see that they care about their job. Other types of videos we post are how-to videos, live videos, informational videos. The video on the top right talks about the roles and responsibilities of the assessor's office. The top left talks about the 3% cap in New Mexico. And we all know the critically acclaimed, nominated for two Academy Awards, <laughs> and best actor, the appraiser hunt. And also some benefits and exemptions. We use all of these technologies, old and new, to promote information as best we can, and it's affected our community positively, it's also affected our office positively. I'm gonna pass it to Jessica so she can talk about the residential group section. Well, good afternoon. So my name is Jessica. I'm the Chief Residential Appraiser for the Santa Fe County Assessor's Office. And yes, that was the only time I've ever been a cover girl, if you'd wanna know the <laughs> truth. <laughs> So I've worked there since the turn of the 21st century, which sounds very dramatic, but it sounds better than saying I've been there 17 years. And now that um, we're starting to get new interns in, new appraisers, what I hear a lot of is, yeah, in 2000 I was in kindergarten, or yeah, I was born in, after 2000. So it's really put it in perspective how long I've been there. And I'm really happy to be doing this in Las Vegas, because this is a city that's been born out of hospitality. Rarely do these days do people just go to a place. We review online, we compare prices. We really wanna know what to expect out of our accommodations. So in a place like Vegas where the options are abundant, you know, it's very important for hotels and restaurants to excel at customer service. Otherwise, the money goes to the competitor. But what about government offices? There's not much way in competition when it comes to the services that the elected officials or other government, government entities provide. So why, is it, why should we even care how the public perceives us? So I just want you to think about a couple of things. First, what kind of relationship do you want to have with the public or your customers? And second, how could providing excellent customer service even benefit me? So we typically think of our customers as the public or that one property owner, but our impact is far greater than that. Think about it, realtors, title companies, uh, private appraisers, even bell bondsmen use information from our websites and our services to make money. So the easier we make it for them to get information, provide instant gratification, the better the relationship becomes. And then they can help us in turn on their professional level. So again, you have a realtor who really knows what our office does, who really knows the impact of what's gonna happen when that person buys a home they're gonna be able and more willing to pass it on to that buyer. And what does that save us? An angry phone call, a walk-in, or even potential protest or pills later on. 
We also have to consider that our employees are part of the customers as well. If the employees really care about what they are doing in an office and they feel that, you know, I work for a place with integrity, they're going to carry it on to those customers. And as you saw earlier, especially in all the Facebook reviews, when you see somebody, especially a stranger, compliment you, it's a great feeling. I know my coworkers, my family, my friends, they can give me a compliment and I'm like, oh, thank you. A stranger points it out and I'm just like, oh my God, thank you. I'm, I'm accepting an award. I'm just... I'm just so happy because this person didn't have to. They're just acknowledging that, hey, you did something nice for me and I really appreciate it. So it's a great feeling. But in order for us to get our employees to that level, we really have to work on training them, guiding them, and make sure we're setting up goals that they can obtain and you know, really make sure that they are obtaining those. So let's return to the point about government affiliates sometimes being the only ones that can provide a service. Think about how you're putting your face out to the public. Are you saying, look, we're your only choice, you have to deal with us? Or are you saying, we are your only choice, how can we help you? Once you recognize not only who your customers are, but how you want to present yourself to them, you're providing a clear-cut path for your office to succeed. And this, in turn, changes the morale in the office. It's not an overnight change. No one's going to be coming in and skipping the next day to work, but you're going to see. You get your employees on board, and you're going to start getting a positive impact and set the tone for constant improvement. Okay, so when I say the word MVD or DMV, depending which state you're on, or IRS, what image pops into your head? Is it a great one? No. Let's face it, there's a stereotype to government workers. And what is that? That they're rude and unhelpful. That the, you can't get in, you know, there's going to be long lines. You can't make a phone call. And most likely you're probably going to have to take a day off of work or half a day off to get that service provided to you. And personally, I haven't gone into an MVD office in years. I do everything online and it's really great. Except I still dread the day that I'm going to have to walk into the office because of this stereotype. So really now is a really great opportunity for you to ask yourself, am I running or do I work for a stereotypical government office? So when I first started all those years ago in the Santa Fe County Assessor's Office, the answer was yes, I work for a stereotype. We were taught to be confrontational. It was an everyday occurrence. We fought with the people even if we were wrong. It wasn't a good thing. There was no accountability for the workers. The bosses pretty much let us loose and they only really uh, like talked to us when we did something extremely wrong. Everyone had to go around because the workload was inequitable. So turnover was high. And you know how it was, some people would work, some people wouldn't, and some people, eh, they try to work some of the time. Never worked out. So you take that stress home with you every day. And really, it was very hard to come back to that environment. So changing this is gonna be culture overnight. Changes in the administration have certainly helped over the years, and there was also a state trend because the state of New Mexico was, New Mexico was trying to improve its public image. So it was doing things like emphasizing transparency, uh, classes on ethics, and also enforcing policies that had never really been enforced before. So luckily the last administration jumped on board and said, hey, we're gonna start making people work and let's try to make them work in a nice way. So let's go ahead and fast forward to the present administration. We're really happy to say that it's changing and our current assessor, Gus, has actually brought the bow tie back into style in Santa Fe. So it's really emphasized to everyone in our office, hey, dress better, make yourself present more professional to the public and they're gonna treat you better, and it's worked. We put up our certificates now to show, these are up in the front, to show that we're educated and able to value property. Well, you'd be surprised. You walk into a salon or a barbershop, and you're not gonna let that person touch your hair unless you know that they can do it, they're educated to do it. Well, you'd be surprised, and of course, we get doctors, lawyers, private appraisers who come in and say, can you even value my house? Well, yes, we we're actually educated. Here's our certificates. It's kind of made a change in the way they perceive us. And we're also geared more towards educating the customers instead of just fighting with them when our policies are challenged. People walk away from our office, or they, you know, we talk to them on the phone, and they feel happy and respected, even if we didn't give them the answer that they wanted to hear. Employees have increased productivity. We can easily more gauge that everybody is working and that they're doing a good job. 
and the stress level is down overall. Of course, there's always little hiccups now and again, but coming to work is actually enjoyable, which is something I never thought I would say. <laughs> so employees are willing to work hard because they know they're changing the impression of that government office. All right, so I think we're pretty much on board here with knowing that we're being recorded, monitored, tracked in all aspects of life. I'm sure we walk through this hotel and they've got like every angle on us at this point in time. And we really take it for granted, for, you know, at this point. I know years ago it was very big brotherish, very scary, but we're kind of saying, hey, you know, it's a safety net against people not doing great in society. But for government transparency, it's actually just something proving to the people that we are indeed on the up and up. We've implemented GPS tracking in the vehicles, and of course our appraisers grumbled because they didn't want us to know that they were eating Sonic and Taco Bell every day. But it's actually helped our employees instead of hurting them. And it's really a quick and easy way to just address the public's concerns. We had a gentleman call in, and his wife was very angry. She said, hey, an appraiser was just out here from her office, or you know, from Santa Fe County, and uh, I told him to leave, he wouldn't. He measured the house, he photoed it, he was arguing with me the whole time, he wouldn't leave. So she was upset, he was upset, and we were concerned. So we pulled the GPS, and then we talked to the appraiser, and we asked him what happened. He said, no, I did drive up to the house, she told me to get out, I just told her I'm here to measure, but she insisted I leave, so I did. So yeah, the GPS had him there for two minutes. So we relate this to the gentleman saying, hey, this is what we found, and he backed off right away, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, my wife sometimes can over-exaggerate. <laughs> so we were happy, you know, we were giving each other high fives because we're like, our appraiser was honest, yes, but, you know, truthfully, we were just concerned that we maybe had started a fight between the two of them later on. <laughs> workflows, we now went to electronic workflows. I know I would get a piece of paper, hand it to somebody, you know, here's your assigned task, and hope that they didn't toss it in the recycle bin or the trash and hope that it got completed. Well, now we know who assigned something, where it went, and what stage it is at, you know, before it gets complete. Our quality control department. They're ensuring not only do we complete these tasks, but that we do it in the correct manner and follow policies and procedures. Overall, being accountable for the work being done ensures that the public trusts your office and the people in it. And that trust should help turn the tide against being that typical government office. So I'm happy to say that the office today is almost confrontational free. Of course, we can't make everybody happy, whether it's employees or the public. But that daily confrontation is now maybe monthly or semi-monthly. And it really starts with pushing the education again, not only on the public, but your employees as well. We have better relationship with tax consultants. Again, something I thought I would never ever say. <laughs> And we actually look at forward to protests because it's an opportunity to collect data instead of just a hassle. Years ago, the way we would handle protests, there'd be about five appraisers lined up because five property owners would be on the other side of the desk. They'd be yelling at us, we'd be yelling at them, and we'd be yelling over each other. It was chaos. I know during formal hearings, sometimes it got so hostile, I'm surprised a wrestling match didn't break out between us and the, and the public. Recently, I had a formal hearing. And it was with an elderly gentleman, you know, he was kind of feisty, but, you know, I tried to help him as best I can. And at the end of the hearing, he actually thanked me. So I walked him out and I shook his hand. I told him, come back and see me next year. I should be here. And then he actually hugged me. And I was surprised because, again, 10, 15 years ago, this would never have happened. And this was when I was a lot cuter. This was before all the talk about the song. <laughs> so, again, when I asked you, how can it benefit you personally to provide excellent customer service? Well, I know that he felt enough trust in me and in our office to actually say, this person cared for me. I'm giving her a hug to thank her. So, again, I'd rather take that any day over that stress that I used to take home. Now, he didn't pass me along his number or anything, but I'm hoping he'll visit again next year because, you know, I got up my customer service game. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Isaiah Romero, who's our commercial chief appraiser. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Name's Isaiah. And I'll be speaking in this off Australian accent for the remainder of the presentation. In protest for not receiving the lead role in the appraiser hunt. Well, this is Vegas. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> well, at last year's conference in Tampa, Assessor Martinez and I, we shared an elevator with a group of people from another jurisdiction, and 
they saw that we were carrying something. We were big giddy. And they asked us, so what's that in your hands? <coughs> and he stated, this is the Public Information Award from IWO, and we just received it. And they began to express themselves as if their, their office was stuck in the mud, and that they didn't see that there was any sort of change that was happening, or any change that was going to happen in the future. Well, that was our office many years ago. Okay, I'm gonna light up a little bit. How many of you are Raiders fans out there? <laughs> any Raiders fans? Can you guys keep your hands up? Watch out with them in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. But anyhow, you know, the Raiders, they're coming to Vegas, and four years ago, they had built themselves up a culture of losing. If you were a Raider, if you were a player in the NFL and you know you got injured, well the Raiders had a place for you. <laughs> if you, if you got in trouble, the Raiders had a place for you. If you were a great player at one point, and you were looking for a place to retire, well, the Raiders, they had a place for you. That was someone like our office. The people within our office, they just spent their days and just, they were just looking, looking for that point, looking for that, that point, that time. They just wanted to retire. Well, things have changed since. And right now I'm gonna speak about how offering great customer service and reaching out to the public, how, that'll, how that's affected the work that we do, how it's improved our, our image. It's allowed us to cultivate growth within our, within, our, within our division. One of the great decisions that Cecil Martinez offered to constituents was instant information. And once he did that, we saw that a lot of our phone calls asking for our square footage, asking for grades, well, that cut down a lot. I used to receive one to two of those a day, you know, duration of 20 minutes each. And now I get maybe one to two of those a month. Visitors into the office. I used to receive one to two of those as well into the office a day, taking the same duration. Well, I receive one to two of those a month as well. Dan has talked a little bit about uh, the city that he's from, Española, the little capital of the world, and that's a 30-minute drive north of, uh, of our office. And there's a town called Edgewood. It's about an hour and a half drive south of our, of our, um, of our office. And in the past, it was difficult to get them information, to let them know about important dates. Both our work online and reaching out to them in their communal areas and going to their events, well, they began, they began to see that we're not just a big, bad assessor's office, that we're humans, too. Well, field reviews. Field reviews, I enjoyed them. I don't get to go on the field as much as I used to in the past, but, you know, the way we did them in the past was, Boots to the ground. And a great day would be 36 parcels a day. Now with technology, we're able to do 30 to 60 an hour. And we've been able to bank that time and save that time for first within our division. How many of you are in a non-disclosure state? All right, there's a few of you guys. Well, you guys know how difficult it is to receive sales information, income information. And the word was out, do not give the Santa Fe County Assessor's Office your lease information because they'll leak it quicker than a Kylie Jenner photo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carlos Garcia of My Assistant Ward, he states here, in the past, he's a mover and shaker in the commercial uh, market in Santa Fe County, he states here, in the past I would look at the Assessor's Office as a quote unquote government office. Now I feel like I'm doing business with my peers. Now when you do business with your peers, you exchange information. You have open dialogue, and you're educating each other about what you witnessed you know, a month ago, a week ago. And that's, that never happened in our office, guys. They weren't willing to work with us. And now we're able to, we were able to build a sales database to once again to complete a first within our division. Ernie Romero, uh, he's another mover and shaker within uh, uh, in the commercial market in Santa Fe County. Uh, he's an agent broker at Phase One Realty. He stated, the image of the office is more likable, and it feels like we're on an even playing field. Well, it took a lot for us to get on that even playing field, and one way was through social media. Daniel Frescas um, featured me in a video re regarding uh, head of family exemptions. I think 
they kind of gave that to me because I didn't get the, you know, the lead role again, but <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna let that go. Well, when we put it on Facebook, the very next day I went to church. I went to, to the grocery store. And people, they wanted to know. I said, what were you talking about? What, what was the head of family exemption? Uh, what, what did your office do? And what are you guys doing? Like, what's going on in your office? Well, guess what? We began to educate the public about our office and what we're doing. And not, not their cousin who had a horrible experience eight years ago with their office. Well, once, once we placed the cards online again, that was a huge thing for us. The public saw that all our cards were on the table, that we had nothing to hide. And we began to build relationships with people like Ernie Romero and the other realtors that I'll speak about here on the slideshow. Other agencies, well, they're willing to collaborate with us. They've heard about the work we've done. They've been to the special events. They've seen our stuff on social media. And they want to be part of that success. They want to work with us on projects. They want to put resources together. Well, that time I spoke about earlier, well, we've been able to spend it now. We spent it on our appraisers. One appraiser in particular, he's been in our office for about a, about a year and a half. And he knows some of the programs within our office better than I do. I've been there 17 years. Methods, um, we've been able to teach them a lot of the methods that we utilize, of course, you know, in the, the commercial department. And this gentleman that I speak of, he knows the methods and he understands the methods better than I, than, than I did five years into my career. Well, if the, public, if the public begins to say, hey, you guys are doing a great job. The professionals are saying, hey, you're doing a great job. Well, we started to, to build a little bit of swagger. <laughs> and, you know, we, we started to motivate each other. My cousin's husband, he spent 10 years in the NFL. And one year, his team made it to the NFL. I mean, to the, they, they made it to the whole time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they made it to the Super Bowl. And that year they made it to the Super Bowl, I asked him, hey Bob, what was special about that team? And he said, you know Isaiah, that team that I was part of, well, we were a family. And that family, I mean, I, I was willing to do anything for them. That was the, the most close-knit team that I've ever been a part of. And truly, I really feel that that's, that's the same story about our office, especially within the division. The people that I work for and I work with, well, they're family, and I want to see them succeed. It's no longer that's your work, that's your work, that's your work, that's your work. That's our work. And let's do this together, guys. And that's been huge for our office. Servant leadership. Well, our office is no longer that place where, you know, everyone's just waiting to retire. This is a place where you're learning skills, skills that will help you in, in your personal life, and it's your work life. Things that are going to help you now and in, in the future. And Kurt Sumner, you know, he's been working with our office for 31 years. He took his first case and he states, the whole office has become more professional, prepared, trained, and educated than ever before. And the public scene. Well, I spoke a little bit about the Raiders earlier. And they did have a rough night Sunday night. But, you know, they changed their culture. Their organization believes that they have a chance that they can win it this year. Their players believe it. Their fans believe it. I'm a Bears fan. And I have invested into their, into their team. I really think that they have a chance <laughs> to win this year. <laughs> well, the same could be said once again for our office. In the past, we didn't have cameras. In the past, we didn't have technology. Well, the commission has seen the success. They've heard from their constituents. They're willing now to invest into our office because they've seen the end result, guys. Well, we've been, we've been able to complete many firsts within our office. We've been able to complete our first procedural manual ever in our office. Our first full and complete commercial re review within our office. That I, that I know of, and I've been there 17 years once again. 
Our first agricultural review, full and complete again. Five years ago, the commission made a decision to spend $1 million on a, on a, on a contract to review all residential parcels within Santa Fe County. That was to populate our panel. Well, right now, we're three years into a five-year plan reviewing all parcels within Santa Fe County, and that's being done in-house, guys. David Barker of Barker Realty, this is a, I guess they call it somewhat of a boutique realty firm, and they do a great job. He states, my fantasy would be to utilize the assessor's office as a model government agency. I'm sorry, my fantasy would be to utilize the assessor's office as a model for, model for all government agencies to follow. And that's began to happen. You know, across the state, there's more information on the assessor's websites. More people are considering chat. You know, when it was time to roll out chat and roll out cards, well, people didn't think it would be successful. People thought it was too much of a risk. As Gus, Gus Martinez stated, you watch. They're going to see the positive impact, then they'll start following in our footsteps. <laughs> Remember guys, it took one person to believe that it could happen, and a handful to carry it out. And it's taken the team to truly change the culture within Santa Fe County. We'll be open for any questions, guys, and we're gonna bring Gus up here. We have uh, 86,000 parcels and we have about 42 staff. How many people need to work with that? How many employees? Uh, well, we have our front staff, which is probably about five people <coughs> working, to, working to chat. But when we get our busy times of the year, we put on uh, some of the appraisers on, on chat, as well as uh, some people in quality control. So we have about probably about 15 people on chat when it's the uh, deal process time and notice of values go up. Yes, sir. I was just wondering if Romero realized that the Kansas City Chiefs were going to win the Super Bowl. What again? The Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, but we've seen them what happens year after year at the end of the season, right? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Where do you show the video? Where? It's, 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 on, it's on our website. If you go to um, our website and go to the videos, okay. informational videos, it's, it's there. You can uh, go and click on the YouTube okay. video there and you can watch it. The online chat, uh, like chat, is that um, being used a lot or predominantly um, instead of phone calls or you know the percentage or? Yeah, you know, um, and I, I've stated is every, every chat is a potential phone call. And I think since we started chat, I think we've uh, done about 35,000 chats, I believe, since we, we've uh, implemented it back in uh, 2015. I just want to clarify, I think a lot of you said, um, since, you, since you have the instant information now, you've gotten less phone calls, less walk-ins, um, and less field visits. Is that, was that correct? Yes, that's correct. No, we, we handle it in-house. Yeah. Any other questions? From when you had, when, uh, I forgot her name. Jessica. Jessica. Yes, when you had mentioned you started in 2000 and now you're 2017, at what point or how long, like the old timers that were there that were, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I want to retire, how many years or how many cycles did they have to phase out before you found this chemistry? This climate, this what you're saying, the, the love of NFL, whatever you said. <laughs> well, you know, I've been in the office for for 20 years, a little over 20 years, and uh, when I started, it was pretty bad. Um, but it's taken time. I think this re when I when I took over office um, in 2015 and the previous administration, there were people starting to leave. But you know, um, it was a change in culture. When I took over, I pushed customer service. I pushed valuing our employees. I've pushed educating our employees. And I think when you do that and you put money and resources and time to them and you show them that you care, 
Um, attitudes start changing. You know, I, I had one person in the office that um, that uh, it was tough. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't think that they would change. But as you pour into them and as you show them that you care, I make it a point every morning when I come into the office, I will talk to each and every individual employee and say, how's your day going, how's it going? You know, and, and you know what, it works. Because they, they, they know that I value them. You know, you're only, I'm only as good as my employees. And in, in the time and effort I put into them. And if I don't put that time and effort, then I can't expect change, I can't expect, you know, and I, it's, it, you lead by example. And I'll tell you this, my deputy assessor, myself, when protests happen, we are at the front lines answering all the questions for our staff when the, when the public comes in, because I want them to see that we're the face of the office, and I want to, my employees to see that we support them, and we're there to help them, and, and, um, and it works out great, because, you know, um, we give them the information there, and, and, uh, and they see how hard we work for them. Um, how, did, how did you convince your county board or your board of supervisors, whatever you have, to assist with funding? And if they didn't, how did you do that? So uh, the previous administration, uh, you know, he did a good job, but it, it was hard. He, he, it was hard for him to get funding, and they, they fought him tooth and nail. But when I came in, I tried to change the atmosphere. I tried to work with them. But they saw the positive change that we were doing, just like with chat and just information coming from the county the good job that my staff was doing. And, and when they saw results, um, you know, I would say to this day, I've gone to ask for everything that I've asked for and they have given it to our office because they've seen results. And so it's just, I, I, I truly believe that when they see the results and they see the change in the office, they're willing to, to help us out. For the employee of the month, do you use certain metrics or certain departments or how do you tell them? So they have to go above and beyond and so we have metrics within our staff so I have all my supervisors they're voting on who they think the employee of the month should be based off of a criteria of five things and so as we're as we put in and we don't know who votes for who until the end and when all the results come in it tells us who who should be the employee um, of the month so. Do you shoot them around? We put them all into a group there, and, and as we vote there, it, it, you know, whoever we vote on based off of just different criteria, it'll come up as employee of the, of the quarter or the month. I think we've got time for one more quick one. <laughs> Any more questions? That's it. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank <laughs> you.